Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytubes.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can take an ordinary photographic image and by using the smudge tool, make it look like a painting in Adobe Photoshop. Now, there are many ways you can do this, but in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a technique that works for me and achieves a convincing outcome. So here you can see three instances. On the far left, I have the original photographic image. In the middle, I have the soft smudge effect applied. And on the far right, again, I have the smudge effect applied. But in this example, it's been applied a lot harder to get a more abstract feel. And you can see, I have introduced an abstract background and changed the color of the face. If you wish to take a closer look at these examples, you can find the download links in the description. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. So this is the original photographic image, which I found on Google. Now, if I pan across, you can see the soft smudge effect. This one is a subtle effect. And it's looking quite nice around the hairline, around the eyes and the beard here. If I just toggle the original image on and off, you can see the difference and how I use the smudge tool. If I pan over to the next example, we can see I have applied the smudge tool a lot harder and included a background and placed in some paint splotches to get a more abstract contemporary effect. So for this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can achieve both effects. First, I'm going to show you how you can achieve a soft smudge effect and then I will show you how you can create a more abstract effect by using the hard smudge effect. If you wish to follow along, you can download the original image, the link is in the description. And if you wish to skip ahead or jump back to any of the techniques, I have listed the times in the description. So let's get into it and make a start. So whatever image you decide to work with, Try and make sure that the image is of reasonable quality and resolution, or you will not get the best outcome. For example, let's take a look at the size properties of my image. If I press and hold Alt and Command on the keyboard and press I, I can quickly pull up the image size properties. And we can see that this image is 1476 by 1476 pixels. We can see in centimeters the width is 25 by 25 and the resolution is 150 dpi. So here we can see the physical size and resolution of the image is adequate and the overall image is looking quite detailed and sharp. So try and get something as close to this as you can. So once I have my image open, the first thing I need to do is duplicate the layer. I'm going to select the image layer in my layers panel and press command J to quickly duplicate the layer. So now I have two layers in the layers panel. I'm going to name the top layer smudge and it's this layer I'm going to apply the smudge effect to. Then I'm going to rename the bottom layer to original. Along the way, I'm going to refer to the original image on the layer below. Okay, so now I am ready to begin. And I'm going to start with the soft smudge effect. So I'm going to zoom in. And generally, uh, when I start to use this technique, I'm going to start around the eyes and the nose and sort of work my way out. So let's make sure I have the smudge layer selected in the layers panel. And I'm going to come over and select the smudge tool from the menu. And I'm going to come up to the top and focus on the control panel. And I'm going to make sure that the strength of the smudge tool is set to around 30%. Because we're going to start with a, a nice light percentage, so it's not going to be too intense and we can get a nice soft effect. And I'm going to make sure that I have the brush set to a feathered brush. And it's looking cool and I'm just going to and I can toggle I'm going to along the way I'm going to be toggling my brush size and I can do that really easy by using the keyboard shortcuts okay so 
I'm going to start on the eye here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag to smudge smudge out the face here. But what I'm going to do is along the way I'm going to be using to and fro uh, strokes. So I'm going to smudge out and smudge in. So I'm going to constantly be smudging out and in like so and just clicking and smudging out and just building up. And, then, and as I go I'm going to toggle the brush size. And what you're looking to do is sort of go with the grain. So if you imagine if you imagine the face is made of various shapes, you can see like the eye is coming around here. What you want to do is when you're using the smudge tool, go with that. So try not to go against that too much. So I'm just going to start to work on the nose here. And you can see that the nose has a sort of arch around here. So I'm going to go along with that. And as I smudge down, I'm going to be smudging back up just to blend that in together. And we can see we've got a sort of round shape here. So I'm going to smudge in a round circle. And then I'm going to smudge along the nose here. And just smudge across. Clicking on and off as I smudge around. So it, it really is a really subtle effect, but we're just building that up. So if we zoom in a little. And carry on smudging. If we come over to the Layers panel, I can toggle the visibility of the smudge layer and we can see that it is a really subtle effect that we're getting here. Um, let's come up. I'm going to just work on the eyes here slightly. So I'm going to go around in a circle as the eye is a, a circle. So I'm going to just smudge down, across, and maybe just keep smudging up and around. I'm going to come around in a circle motion here. So I'm going to sort of smudge these reflections on the eyes just to make that look interesting. Come around like so. So if I toggle the visibility, we can see that effect, nice and subtle. And again, I'm going to come on to the, the white area of the eyes, but I might just toggle my brush size down and just sort of blend those in. And I'm going to do a nice long smudge along the eye there and put my toggle my brush size down and just sort of click and drag out on the eyelashes. And just sort of continue to blend, blend this in. So I'm going to just refer to this and you can see that's looking quite nice. I'm just gonna keep going. Smudging this out and down. Smudging back and forth just to blend this in nicely. And I can see I've got a nice sort of dark line here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just click and drag all the way over that. Just smudge that out. So we get a nice smudged line. Let's blend that out. Smudge it slightly. So what you could do, is you can smudge out. As you can see here, for example, I just smudged that bit of detail out. But if I think it's too much, I'm going to smudge it back in. So you're kind of... Imagine the face as a piece of clay almost. We're just going to work uh, tool. Just going to work with the image and really smudge it out. You can see now this area is quite a big area, so I'm just going to try and toggle the brush size so it looks kind of like the same size. So we can just smudge that out. Smudge it back in, just blending those colours together. Like so Let's come back onto the nose a little and just smudge that down. Smudge it up. Come over here to the nose area. That's quite cool. Smudge it down. So keep in mind to go with the shape of the face, like I was saying earlier on. Just try and identify a shape and just work it. Like you're rubbing it in come up. You can see the face is sort of doing this direction so I'm going to smudge across like so. Sort of go with it. Smudge back in. So let's zoom out. Let's compare that now. So that's looking quite nice. So using those simple techniques, smudging out 
and smudging in to blend the colours, identifying shapes and curves in the face and smudging with them while toggling the brush size, I'm going to continue around the rest of the face area until I have something that looks like this. So I've spent a little time going around the skin area using all those techniques just to smudge the skin area and as you can see I've left out the hair, um, the, the hair areas and the moustache area, I'll be getting onto that in a minute. But it's up to you how much you want to uh, smudge. Now let's toggle the visibility of the smudge layer and we can see that we've got a nice subtle smudge effect and I could probably spend a bit more time going around these areas and just touching them up a little. And you can see that I've also done a bit of work to the the shirt area on the shoulders just to smudge that out to make that look a little bit more like a painting. So once you're happy with the skin area, we're going to move on to the hair. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same effect, but this time I'm going to just change the strength of the smudge effect. And I'm going to change this up to around, I'm going to push this up to around 80%. Because as we can see, the the hair, the hairs are quite sort of defined and quite prominent and I want to try and capture that. Uh, I want to smudge it but I don't want to smudge it too much. I want to try and keep the, the sort of hair effect. So let's have a go at this. So I'm going to toggle my brush stays down and now I'm just going to come and do some sort of radical strokes and sort of just go along with the hair here. So as you can see I'm just making some some radical strokes and I'm going to just go with it and with the smudge tool I'm going to sort of blend in and blend out some of the colours so I can smudge in some of the skin tones into the moustache here and smudge out some of the colours as well. So we're going to use this principle just smudge out and in like so. And Again I can toggle my brush size up and maybe try and get some thick strokes and then toggle my brush size in just to smudge in some of the nicer strokes. So we get a bit of a mix of big and small strokes. And this might take a little time as we're going to have to work with that. And after a little while, I'll end up with something that looks like this. So if I come over to my layers panel and just toggle the visibility, we could see that that is looking quite, it's looking quite nice. Lots of nice brush strokes there. It's looking pretty cool. So then I'm basically going to come up to the top and I'm going to apply the same principle to the hair. Let's just grab the smudge tool and push this up. I'm just going to work with the hair, it's looking quite frizzy, so I'm just going to just add some nice big strokes. I'm going to start big and work my way in. So I'm going to go around and just blend the hair out there and just, just get really loose with your mouse or pen and just drag it out. So I'm going to start nice and big within the middle and just drag some nice brush strokes, push it out like so and I'm then I'm going to just come into the and work on the hairline perhaps just bring the brush size in a little and just do some finer strokes and just click and squiggle some some hair in there. Again remembering to drag some hair out and drag some skin in so you get a nice interesting get a nice interesting blend. And after a while, I'll have something that looks like this. So if I come over to the layers panel and just toggle the visibility of our smudge layer, you can see the effect that I've had. It's looking quite nice. So we're almost there. Uh, we've almost 
completed the the soft smudge effect. So what we could also do is do a bit of work on the background. For example, you can just if you if you have a background and it's a bit pixelated like this, you could just grab your smudge tool and just smudge around just to work in those colors, smudge those as well so the style looks quite similar. So let's do a little bit of that. Smudge around. It's very faint. Depending on the complexity of your background, you might just want to smudge that a little. So that's looking pretty cool. So that's the soft smudge effect. And what you can do, you can either you can either leave it like that, or you could maybe do a bit more smudging on the face. If you remember, we used a smudge tool of 30%. What you can do is just take a look at your canvas or your image from from afar like so and we can just make you know maybe make some more smudges to the face just to accentuate that so it looks a little bit more smudged as subtle as it is and I quite like it I might just want to add some more smudges just to make it look a bit more painted so using a thicker brush a bigger brush and a 80% strength we could just go around some areas and just smudge and bring some things out to make it look a little bit more just to accentuate that smudge effect so there's no real limit to how much you can apply this smudge effect but uh, I'm quite happy with with this right now I mean I could spend a lot more time working on some of the the details but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to leave it there so that's the soft smudge effect now before I leave it there I might just want to come over to my smudge layer in the layers panel. I'm going to apply an adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on the adjustment layer bot button at the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to choose curves. I'm just going to push the curves up a little just to really make the colors a little bit more rich. And if that's looking a little bit intense, I might also add a hue saturation adjustment layer and just pull down the saturation and that's looking quite nice and it's up to you if you want to use these techniques but this is something I just want to use just fades it out a little bit and makes it look like a nice nice painting effect so that completes the first part of this tutorial on how to use the smudge tool to create a soft smudge effect next I'm going to demonstrate how to create a more abstract creative effect so here we are back with the original image and what I want to do first is I want to separate the figure from the background. So quite simply I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm just going to click to draw around my figure like so. Now this doesn't have to be too perfect. I'm just going to quickly go around my figure and select areas around here. Let's do this as quick as I can. Okay, so now I've created a selection around the outside. I'm just going to press Command X to cut and I'm going to press and hold Shift command on the keyboard and press a V to paste and that's just going to paste it in place. So now I've got two layers in the layers panel and I don't need this one on the bottom anymore. So I'm just going to select it and click delete. Okay, so now I've got uh, the cutout of my figure. Then I'm going to open up a background. Now I have sourced this paint texture background from the internet and I'm just going to press command A to select all, Command C to copy, and I'm just going to come back into my original image and just press Command V to paste. And as you can see, that's looking a little smaller than I need, so I'm going to press Command T to pull up free transform, and I'm going to press and hold Shift and Alt on my keyboard, and just click and hold the top right just to scale that up like so. And that's going to fill my canvas area. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press enter and I'm going to come to my layers panel 
and I'm going to move this new layer that's on the top to the bottom. So I'm going to drag that down like so, and there you go. Let's just drop below. So now I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> okay, so this time we're going to be a bit more radical with the smudge tool. So I'm going to come over to the menu and I'm going to select the smudge tool. But this time, instead of using a feathered brush, I'm going to come to the brush tool and I'm going to use a solid brush. So there's going to be no feather effect this time. And I'm going to go for a strength of 100. So this is going to be a really hard effect. So I'm going to start with the big areas and work my way in. And you're going to have to be quite confident with this uh, technique. And it might not look great to start with, but we're going to have to do a bit of work. So let's make a start. So I'm going to select the top layer. And I'm just going to start to really smudge this like so. And again, just using the same techniques as before, the same principles, identifying the shapes and curves in the face, we're going to go with them. And again, it's just a case of clicking and dragging and toggling the brush size. And we're just going to get quite experimental with this and just, just keep dragging out and in and go along with the face. So I'm going to work with that. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to have to toggle the brush size down a little bit. Just work with that. Let's drag this in. And after a little while, I'll have something that looks a bit like this. Now, we can see we've got quite big, harsh strokes going in. That's looking quite abstract. So now I'm going to turn my attention and focus on the eyes here, the small details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my brush sizing nice and small. And again, try and be quite careful. And less is sort of more. So again coming around in a circle on the eyes on the shapes just try and pull that in and again you might have to wrestle a bit with the strokes because because it's such a high strength you you might just accidentally pull in some of the colors you don't want so it's just a little bit of a wrestle and again remember to pull out and pull in so if you accidentally pull out some some color you don't want for example you can just push it back in that's looking quite interesting there go zoom out it's looking quite cool let's try the other eye sometimes it's just a question of knowing when to stop when to just leave it we really want to try and keep the same shape so it doesn't look too bad. So let's, let's try that. It's looking pretty cool. Let's just come in and work a bit more on the right eye there. Let's have a look at that. It's looking quite cool. Now, what we can do now is I'm going to turn my attention to the hair. And what I want to try and do is blend the hair into the background. So, again, just using some quite, quite confident strokes, I can begin to just squiggle on the line and blend it in. So it's looking quite interesting. So I can just push that up again. Get a nice big stroke. That's it. Be quite confident with that. Toggle the brush stroke to get some various strokes going. Just 
that's looking quite cool. So I'll come to the I'll come back to the head in a moment, but what we also can do is we can apply that technique to this area here. So we just want to break up the line so it doesn't look so straight because we want to make it look slightly part of the that sort of abstract background there. So let's have a look at that. It's looking pretty cool. Let's do some more. Yeah. It's quite nice. Let's push that. Push it up right up. So sometimes it's a case of zooming in and working quite closely on the detail. And then zooming out to work on some of the bigger details, like so. It's pr looking pretty cool now, isn't it? It's looking quite abstract. Let's let's do that here. Let's pull up the look of the hair there and the ear. It's looking quite cool. And again, it's just a, it's just a question of how far you want to push it, but try and keep some of the essential details so it still looks like the original image, so we can still see who it is. Let's push on there, moustache there. Let's get really playful with those strokes, squiggly strokes. It's pretty cool. Have a bit of fun, really. It's quite fun to do. Let's zoom out and take a look at that. It's looking pretty cool. But that eye is looking pretty dark, so let's try and work in and try and work in some more of the white area. So let's just drag that white area. There we go. It's looking quite interesting. There you go, it's looking a little better. So after a little while, you will end up with something that looks like this. And you can see that this is looking a lot different from the other smudge effect we worked on earlier. So once you're happy with your overall smudge effect, uh, what, what you can do is, and what I'm like to do is I'm really going to go with this whole abstract effect. So I'm going to change the color of the face here. So I'm going to come over to the layers panel. I'm going to select my layer and I'm going to apply a hue saturation adjustment layer. So let's click that and I'm just going to toggle the hue um, and be sure to click on the clipping icon to clip that to the layer below so it doesn't affect the actual background. So I'm going to toggle the hue of my face just to change that up slightly and I'm going to pull it down so it looks a little bit more sort of purple. That's looking a little bit more radical. And I can tweak my saturation here. I can pull it down to make it light, but I'm just going to accentuate that. Make it look look make it look a little bit more richer. And that's looking pretty cool. So let's zoom out a little. Yeah, it's looking nice and colourful. So, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Paint Blobs PSD. And you can find this in the downloadable folder. And as we can see in the layers panel, it's, we've got a few of these blobs and they exist on different layers in the layer group. So first of all, I'm going to click on the group itself and I'm just going to drag this into my PSD doc like so. I'm just going to position this on top and if I come to the layers panel I can drop in and if I want to I can select one of these paint swatches layers and just double click to pull up the layer styles and I'm going to change the color of this I'm going to apply a color overlay and I'm going to click on the color picker box in the middle and I might just select a color from the background let's try this dark blue here it's looking quite nice and if I want to duplicate this little uh, pinked blob somewhere else on the canvas, I'm going to press and hold Alt on the keyboard and just click and drag. That's going to duplicate, make a quick duplicate of that layer. And I could position this somewhere else on the canvas, perhaps here. 
And if I want to rotate that, I can press Command-T. And that's going to put my free transform. I can rotate that around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go around and duplicate some of these paint swatches around just to add to the overall abstract effect of my painting. And soon you will have something that looks like this. And that completes the second part of this tutorial on how to use the smudge tool to create a hard smudge effect. So it's just a case of working to those simple smudging principles and experimenting to get an outcome you are happy with. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook fan page. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. If you do have a go at this yourself, be sure to come and paste it up on my Facebook wall. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Looking forward to that. Well, that's it for another video brought to you by tissitudes.com. Thanks for watching, have fun guys, and I'll see you next time.